Hello guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Bun to Bro. This episode we're going to talk about American fast food in China. First, let's talk about the most popular fast foods in China right now. The hottest fast food restaurant in China right now is Popeyes. I meant Popeyes Louisiana Kitchen. Can you guess what it looks like in China? Right now I'm in Manhattan Chinatown. As you can see, there's a Popeyes in the background. Not many people are going in. The storefront looks very normal, just like a very typical fast food restaurant. That's what it is, really. So the very first Popeyes Louisiana kitchen opened in my hometown, Shanghai, last month. It became popular right away. A lot of people would show up and queue outside of the store at 4 a.m. in the morning. It's been open for a month, and then you can still see a lot of people waiting outside. One thing I find super interesting is it hasn't come up with a name in Chinese yet. Unlike in Chinatown, there's a very phonetic uh, Chinese version for it. Bai bai qi. In China, it's still called Popeyes. So the Chinese Popeyes looks super trendy. Uh, it's very spacious. It's definitely so much bigger than a typical Popeyes in the US, although it's selling the exact same food. If you read through some reviews on the Chinese equivalent of Yelp, where people review all types of restaurants, you can see most people actually give not really good reviews on Chinese Popeyes. However, poor reviews haven't prevented people from going there. When I was preparing for this video, Popeye opened a second location in Shanghai in a big shopping mall. So they are really taking this seriously. They actually plan to open hundreds of locations in the near future. The next super popular restaurant is Shake Shack. The first Shake Shack in China opened also in my hometown in Shanghai uh, in 2018, I believe. And it caused a big hit at the time where the queue would actually wrap around the restaurants for several circles. So Shake Shack actually carried over the popularity from NYC, from US, all the way to China. Even till today, people love it because it has super fresh ingredients and it also is super trendy. You can tell from the neon light decor. I've actually been to uh, the very first Shake Shack in Shanghai. I think the menu is really similar to the American one. Uh, they even sell souvenirs. And I just learned they opened their second location in Shanghai and the very first airport location. As you can see, uh, people are going there like crazy as well. Next, I want to talk about some super solid American fast food restaurants, or I want to call it the founding fathers of American fast food in China. First one is KFC. So KFC went to China in 1987 and opened its first restaurant in Beijing. Over the past 30 years, it has opened thousands of restaurants in China. Now the number of KFCs in China doubles that of McDonald's. And KFC has spent the most effort in terms of localization. You can find a lot of items that you will never find in the American menu. The best example is uh, Lao Beijing Ji Rou Zhuan, which is basically the burrito-like Peking duck style chicken wrap. It takes localization super seriously. At one point, it launched a sister brand. It's called Breaking Dawn or Dongfang Ji Bai that sells exclusively Chinese fast food, like a quick bites or dim sum looking Chinese food. I don't want to comment on how it went afterwards, but my point is it took localization super seriously. And Chinese KFC is definitely something that I will miss when I live here in the US. Another founding father, of course, is McDonald's. McDonald's went to China in 1990. Compared to KFC, McDonald's hasn't really changed its menu. It's pretty much American. I think it's been doing well over the years is because it's really cheap and the food quality is really on point. I personally like Chinese McDonald's very much. As a kid, I used to go to McDonald's every weekend, uh, of course, for kids meal. And in my most recent road trip in the Southwest China, we actually had a family meal <laughs> in one of the McDonald's and it was really good. The next family father I wanna talk about might surprise you and it is Pizza Hut. One super interesting concept introduced to China at the time was actually the salad buffet. I'm actually not sure if they do uh, salad buffets here in the US. There are actually super technical articles online, in Chinese of course, teaching you how to build a very tall salad bowl in one shot at Pizza Hut to get the most out of it. That's how crazy people were. 
I'm super sure a lot of people, mostly young people, would actually consider going to Pizza Hut a super trendy thing to do. And also because they launched a concept called afternoon tea at Pizza Hut, where you can get beverages, snacks, and all kinds of stuff for a relatively reasonable price. And I think Pizza Hut is one of the first restaurants to do home delivery. Uh, they call it Bisheng Jai Ji Song. That's way before Chinese people start ordering food delivery in bulk. I personally have great memory at Pizza Hut. I remember one time my parents and I had a big celebration at Pizza Hut. I think I did something uh, super awesome at a competition, I think. And then we went to Pizza Hut for a celebration. Next, I want to talk about a couple that are doing just all right. The first is Subway. Subway came to China in 1995. It has a great name called Sai Bai Wei, which phonetically really resembles Subway, but it actually has a great meaning. The reason it hasn't done so well in China, first of all, most Chinese people don't like cold or uncooked stuff, and we actually don't eat bread that much. And apparently it's not that cheap. Healthy and cheap are the two selling points for Subways in the US. So that means Subway can rely on its main selling point in China. That's why it didn't get really popular. The other big fast food place that is just doing all right in China is Burger King. The Burger King came to China in 2005 and now it has over 1,000 locations in China. The reason it's not doing too well in China, I think is due to the poor service. I don't want to comment further because I've never had Burger Kings in China. So the next batch are the ones that failed, the ones that didn't do too well, or the ones that has already become a history. So the first one I want to tell you about is Papa John's. So compared to Pizza Hut, it came to China really late. It didn't come till 2003. And it has a really weird name. The direct translation of Papa John's Chinese name is Great John. That doesn't make sense, right? I think that name is horrible. Other than poor management, I think one key reason Papa John's didn't do too well in China is because people don't watch sports like Americans do in the US. So I remember when I was in college, the nearest Papa John's near my apartment, they do promotions with sports games. So for example, I, I was in Atlanta at the time. Every time there was a Falcons or a Hawks game, if in the most recent game, Hawks scored over 50 points in the first half, they would do 20% off for the order. And we all know the drama between Papa John's and NFL, right? So Chinese know nothing about those. They will get zero exposure on Papa John's from sports events. And the next big failure I want to talk about is Taco Bell. Taco Bell first came to China in 2003, it closed in 2008, and it went back to China in 2017 with three locations in my hometown, Shanghai. And yet, it's still not doing well. Why? I think the first reason, of course, is the food. I think Taco Bell's food is really cheese heavy. And I think a lot of you might know Chinese cuisine is really light or has no cheese in it. We don't really like cheese related stuff. And Chinese cuisine is not really heavy on sauce. So we don't care how many different kind of hot sauces you have Taco Bell, okay? And another big caveat that Taco Bell did was the branding. Apparently Taco Bell tried really hard to become a high-end restaurant or a sit-down restaurant with its normal food items. So it's definitely not going well. So the next few came to China at some point or they are still there, but they never got big. So the first one is TGI Fridays. Yeah, apparently TGI Fridays has been in China since 1995, but I swear <laughs> I only heard its existence in China till when I was doing this video. And apparently TGIF is struggling both in the US and internationally this year. The next one, White Castle. Apparently White Castle went to China in 2017. I think it has a location in the same complex as Taco Bell. It didn't spend too much effort to get bigger in China and also because um, Chinese don't really like sliders. Yeah, we're still trying to like burgers. So no, no sliders for now. The next is Dunkin' Donuts. So Dunkin' came to China in 2008, trying to copy its success in Japan. However, it found it super hard to localize, together with the fierce competition from Starbucks. And lastly, there's somebody online said, Jack in the Box came to China in the 90s, but I couldn't find any resource. So maybe it's gone with the wind. 
or has become a legend in the American fast food history in China. But nonetheless, we'll put it in here. All right, after all these success and failure stories, let's talk about what makes Chinese people like certain fast food. So the fundamental criterion is the taste. I think for most Chinese people, the particular fast food has to be different enough to Chinese cuisine, but easily acceptable. I think that's why the fried chicken places can usually thrive because it's really tasty. Uh, everybody likes it. The second thing is definitely brand positioning. A lot of aforementioned restaurants, they actually try to rebrand themselves when entering the Chinese market. And reasonably, they want it to go upward. So for example, Popeyes is repositioning itself right now to be a sit-down type of restaurant, to be a trendy middle-end fast food restaurant because most people don't know what it looks like in the US. So from the examples of Pizza Hut and Taco Bell, both of them try to rebrand themselves as a sit-down or a trendy restaurant in China. One did really well, at least in the beginning, and the other one failed. Right, so I think it's a really tricky rebranding game. The next important criterion is timing. So the concept of consumption upgrades, Xiaofei Shenji, has become super popular these days. And a consumption upgrade simply means people nowadays are more willing to spend their money to try new things. I think that's how Shake Shack and Popeyes, they're really seeing the opportunity and then they enter in a relatively better time. The next criterion is the willingness to localize. So two perfect examples, KFC and Pizza Hut. Their menus are so different. They're so Chinese compared to the American ones. Just a random guess from myself, um, they're both owned by young brands, at least when they enter China. So maybe they know how to do stuff. So lastly, Chinese people love to try new things. They are just like the Japanese people like 20 or 30 years ago because fast food restaurants went to Japan first. So for example, when Krispy Kreme went to Japan, so they opened a location in Tokyo's Shinjuku back in the days, there was a super long line there. That reminded me of the super long line in front of Shake Shack, in front of Popeyes in Shanghai right now. So for American restaurant, the trick is to how to be sustainable in an Asian market like the Chinese market. And as usual, just wanna talk about some final thoughts. I think one fast food that would have huge potential is Chipotle. I think Chipotle could do really well in China. And if you don't know, avocado or guacamole is becoming super popular in China these days. The other thought is, I think the fried chicken market is kind of saturated. So we'll see how much longer Popeyes can be popular for. And Lastly, I can guarantee you, Panda Express is not going too well in China, okay? That's all I wanna say about American fast food in China for now. If you think I missed any big success or big failure, comment down below and let me know. And as always, please let me know what other topics you wanna learn about China. And I'll see you in the next episode. If you like this video, give me a like and subscribe.